Hello everyone, it's Sharon of East Rich Pottery, and today I am making sugar bowls and garlic jars. So small jars with lids. And we're gonna try something new today. Um, this is for my students on Saturday mornings who seem to be using too much water. So normally, I use this bucket of water when I throw. But today, I'm going to use this bucket of water and see how it goes. Um, and if it goes well, well then, I think I'll bring some of these for my students to use and see if they can get taller walls going up when they use less water. So that is what I'm hoping for. And I have about about a pound and a quarter of clay here, a small bowl or a small jar. And I have to remember not to put my hand in that one. Um, so I have this tiny little, tiny, tiny little bucket. I'm just dipping my fingertips and my hand wet. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to get it stuck to the bat. And I'd say that I use the most water when I'm centering. And that's probably about it for the rest of the pot, unless I'm up at the rim, in which case you want some, uh, some wet fingers. So I'm just um, cutting up and bringing it down. problem with this little tiny bucket of water is that my sponge is bigger than my bucket. <laughs> okay, so there it is centered. And now I'm gonna wet my fingertips and open her up. And wet my fingertips. So now there actually is water down there. I have to find my sponge and get the water out. So even with that tiny little bucket, there's water down there. And I'm just going along the bottom, compressing and getting all slurry out. see I always go back to the rim. When I go back to the rim, I slow the foot down because you really don't want to go fast when you're touching the rim. And now I'm going to make a couple of pulls. So I come over on the side, I squeeze in, I push in with the outside hand, I curl the inside fingers. Notice how my thumb is connecting the two hands. And I lift the clay. My inside fingers are curled, and that helps the bottom hand have something to grasp. And up it goes. So that was the second pull. And back to the rim. There's a little more clay at the bottom, so I'm going to push this in down here at the bottom. You'll see the clay move. And I'll take one more pull, and then I'll shape it. So, pushing out with the inside finger, getting the clay off, curling. And actually, if I make it round, you'll see the top come down. It won't be as tall, but I think I want to make a little round sugar bowl. had a, a couple of mugs come out that were this nice round big wide top shape that I really like. Um, okay. So now I'm just going to refine the shape back to the rim. Okay, 
so now I'm going to take my metal rib and a wooden rib on the inside. This one might be too big. It's a little big. I just want to make sure I uh, get a nice round curve at the bottom there. So now I'm pushing down and out with the inside rib and the outside rib is just guiding the clay. It's just supporting. I'll flip it around. And I'm shaping it. And using two ribs is really great because it compresses the sidewalls gets off all the slurry. With the tiny little bucket, I still have a little bit of slurry. And now I'm gonna make a line. Okay, so it can be done. We can throw with a tiny, itty bitty little pail. So if you're having trouble with too much water, I suggest you try using a smaller container and uh, give yourself a drought. So now I just have to measure the top because I'm going to have to put another bowl of clay to make the lid. So I have my calipers and I'm measuring the inside. It's about where I want it. Tighten it up. Double check it. It's too big. It's pretty good. Okay. Right. Um, just take the clay up the bottom. Right, so now I have to recenter the lid. And, uh, this is about a pound of clay. And I have to wet my wet my hands for this. Okay. So I'm still using my little itty bitty bucket of water, which might be harder on a lid, because throwing a lid is kind of like throwing a plate. And that's the only time I use a lot of water is when I'm using making a plate. Okay, so I cone it up. Move it down the same way. So to make a lid, I want to bring the ball of clay down pretty low. Well, depending on what kind of lid you want to make. If you want it to be like a tall top hat, you wouldn't bring it down this low. But this is going to be kind of small. And use my calipers. So that mark is where the opening has to be. So I have to open, I have to open up to out here. So I'm gonna bring it down even a little lower. I want a 
to leave it pretty thick so that when I flip it over to trim it, I have clay to work with, um, you know, to give it a little pizzazz. So I, it's pretty thick down here. It's probably an inch, maybe an inch and a half. And I'm just compressing. A lot of times, if you throw a knob on the other side of the middle of the lid, on the other side of right here, um, it's double thick, so you'll end up um, getting a crack right here in the middle. So you really wanna do a, a really good job compressing. Um, sometimes I'll put a button of clay right here in the middle after I put the knob on, and that usually contains a crack or stops a crack from happening. But you don't have to do that. If you compress well, you don't need to do that. Um, all right, so here we go, let's see. All right, so that's the outside edge where my my flange thingy has to go. So now I'm gonna open up and I'm pushing down with my index finger. I just get it started with my fingers and then I'll use a, a wooden rib make it um, a 90 degree angle perpendicular. This has, you know, the perfect angle for what I need. And you have to keep going back with your caliper and testing. So it's a little big. It's, it's better to have it a little big because you can always take clay away when you trim. If it's too small, it's really hard to get it back out. It's like impossible to get it back out, actually. Okay, so keep testing it. There we go. So now it's a little too small. And it's a, a bit of a song and dance to get it where you want it. This thing's getting a little too tall. I'm not making a butter, a French butter dish, so I don't want it that tall. So I'll take some off in a minute. Touch the rim, you want to go really slow because you don't want to make it go off center at this point. That's pretty good. I'm going to bring this down. I don't like it that tall. It'll just cause headaches later on when you're trying to glaze and you have too much surface for glaze to connect and fuse the lid. On. You don't want that to happen later on. So you're constantly thinking about, you know, the next step, trimming and glazing while you're throwing. Um, there's another little thing I like to do, and um, also because I don't want glaze that might be here to stick um, to the inside of the jar. So I'm going to give this a little angle in. So it should be a tight fit down here, down there, but you have that much space. Um, so you can put glaze on the inside of this thing and not worry about it fusing to the inside of the jar in the kiln. All right, and we'll see if the lid fits. Hold on. I just want to make sure there's no water on it. Okay. Let's see how we did. Yeah, 
can do. All right. So now I can pull a wire, and that is how I make a lid for a jar and success with using very little water. All right, everybody. Happy throwing. Catch you next time.